Hello everybody, my name is Lady Gear to you, and welcome back to us play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. In the previous video, uh, we got our first Triforce chart, and in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different that I could have taken care of a long time ago, but I decided to just put it off until now. Um, what we're going to be doing in today's video is that we're going to be, going to, we're going to be taking care of the Ghost Dun dun dun! I want to go home! Okay, the ghost ship is honestly one of the coolest uh, moments of the Wind Waker. You're going to see on screen right now a map of the ghost ship chart that we got a couple of videos ago. Um, this, will because this will tell you where the ghost ship will be located in the overworld. Uh, you can, uh, you'll can you see the different um, islands and, and the different uh, moon cycles that it appear on. The, um, the current moon cycle, we're on Great Fist Isle, so... Um, just because it's here on my game does not necessarily mean it'll be the same on yours if it's if it's a different moon cycle. And honestly, this is one of the coolest parts of this game because uh, having the, the different moon cycle um, affect what is going to be happening in the game, that is just cool. And this is a freaking GameCube game of all things. Um, well, this is a Wii U game, but uh, it was originally on the GameCube. But this was an idea that they had a long time ago, and I don't know why they haven't used it again. This is such a cool idea. But enough about that, because we have some redads we'll be fighting, we have, um, those dudes, I don't remember their names, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call them Jeffrey, um, this will forever be known as Jeffrey, and this will be my Jeffrey. <laughs> I don't know, I always like the name Jeffrey, I don't know why, I've never really known anybody named Jeffrey in real life. Um, I think those are Poe's, uh, they might be Poe's. Eh, whatever. Um, we got another Strafos dude right there, or whatever that guy's supposed to be. But we want to care of the is the Wizard Robe. Wizard Robe enemy is actually pretty nice. Um, if you want to go, if you're trying to grind up all materials like the golden feathers, and I don't know actually if they summon the enemies or uh, give you golden feathers, but they do give you some pretty nice items. Like, I, what does this guy give you? I don't think this guy gives you anything, but you can summon other things uh, like those enemies that give you the drop the gold. Oh, they give you magic. That's, that's pretty nifty to remember. Um, so just so you know, um, there will be a list in the description below uh, telling you guys where the ghost ship will be located in the old world, um, depending on the moon cycle. I'm not going to be saying where it is on the game, where it is on in commentary, because honestly I don't remember off the top of my head, and I don't really want to look at my ghost ship chart at the moment. I would do it in editing or something like that, or just have it in the description below, whatever I'm going to be doing. So yeah, that's the ghost ship. It's kind of anticlimactic, uh, only dealing with the wizard robe and a couple of smaller enemies we've seen a couple, uh, many times before. But I still really like this area. It's really cool. And doing that, we have our first Triforce Sard. You need seven more Sards to form a complete piece of the Triforce. Fun fact, that sound effect that you heard um, before we got booted out of the uh, ghost ship, that sound effect is a sped up version of an unused voice clip uh, in the game's files. Um, I remember, um, I definitely demonstrated this a long time ago, um, but there was an unused of sound clip of Jaboon uh, wielding in pain, which I'll, just, which I'll have on screen again. <laughs> If you listen closely to that sound file of um, that of that ghost of screaming when you leave the ghost ship, it's actually a sped up version of that voice clip. So that's a, that's today's lesson of Lady Gear to use useless knowledge brought to you by Lady Gear to you. Some people have been asking me why I don't really like Tingle that much. Um, and the reason is actually kind of silly. Um, in my first playthrough of Majora's Mask, I was trying to figure out how to get a map for the area, for the different areas, and I was trying to find Tingle, and it took me a really, really long time to find him. And I was like getting, and when I finally found him, I was like in a mode of, okay, I don't care who this character is, I hate him with every fiber of my being, and I haven't even met him yet. So yeah, I really hate Tingle. What do you guys have to say? Eve, oh. Ugh, this is heavy. This is between you and me. But this guy has another brother. Oh, great, there's more of him. Yeah, I think we've seen them before already. What do you have to say? Thank you for the gift. I know that the Tingle statue is quite hard to come by. Um, there's not much, but please, take this. And we get some rubies. Uh, 
So that's pretty cool. Ah, you have gotten them all. Please wait a moment, as usual. And we get an orange ruby. Okay. I find it weird that uh, uh, they, they they give you such a big reward for this. Well, it's not um as well, it's not as big as like getting a herpes or anything like that. But you get five hundred rubies for that. So it's pretty interesting. So it's it's a little unusual that they have something like that, but then they have no indication in game as to how you could possibly find them. You find the chart, it's splendid, splendid, show me, show me. Why, you can't read that chart, it's current state. Impossible, sir. Would you like me to decipher it for you for 398 rubies? Yeah, this is something that drew a lot of criticism in the original Wind Waker game. Tingle, tingle, cool, cool, limpa, become readable! Okay, <laughs> Yeah, this is something they drew a lot of criticism in the in the original version because um, some because some of the Triforce stars we're gonna be seeing in this playthrough they were originally Triforce charts in the GameCube version, so you would have had to have def deciphered more charts um, um, than you do than you do in this game. So uh, yeah, you had to like spend a lot of rubies. Um, the the, the, the pretty much the entirety of uh, this uh, side quest was uh, heavily criticized in the GameCube version, and it still is for uh, to a certain degree in this version as well. Um, of how you have to uh, look for treasure chart, treasure charts, and then have them deciphered so that you can go into the overworld to look for them. All right, so where we're gonna be going next is we need to go east of the Forest Haven to go over to the Cliff Plateau Islands, or Cliff Plateau. Cliff Patolo Isles, or however you're supposed to pronounce that. I can't pronounce words, apparently. Um, our first Trevor Sard is over here, and I'm not entirely sure if we need the Trevor Sard to be able to um, figure these out, to be able to get find these. I've never been able to find any information about this online or anything like that. Um, I, d I, have to, I did take a picture of one Trevor Sard, so I'm going to be trying that off screen um, in between video recordings. But yeah, we have our the next driver start. Now something kind of cool is that it is entirely possible to um, um, to um, have these complete before um, even going into the Earth Temple. And I start with the wind, or right, right, the Wind Temple. Um, it is entirely possible to beat this uh, way before you get to this point. So people who have been playing this game for a while, um, you probably already know where all these are. So like I have a friend who's been playing Windbreaker for the longest time and uh, see. Uh, told me stories about how he completed the Triforce Sword side quest before even getting into the Wind Temple. Um, so, uh, that's pretty interesting. I, I thought about doing that on my playthrough, but decided not to because, uh, for the sake of continuity. And it, it just would make more sense to take care of these when we were supposed to. Back inside the caves for the Cliff Plateau Isles, uh, because there are a couple uh, treasure chests in here that I want to go get. We have seen this area before um, when we we're taking care of the withered uh, tree side quest, but I decided, you know, there's a treasure chest in here that we missed. We might as well go get it right now. It's not going to contain anything like super amazing or anything like that, but you know what? I want to take care of this right now. So we have to be very careful going around this. Uh, what the. Um, well, this isn't very nice at all. I guess we have to go on top of the area. And... Whee! You. And... Ah! <laughs> okay, that was actually kind of funny. How we, like, land on the... on the branches. It's a joy pendant! Are you kidding me? I went through all of that just for a stupid joy pendant. Joy Pendant! How many do we have now? 20. Hey, we have enough for the side quest thingy. So I guess now we know what we're going to be doing in the next episode. Still, it doesn't... I'm just speaking gibberish now.
And there was another dress just up here that I forgot about. Don't be a joy pendant. 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 Oh, treasure chart. Um, okay, I'm very glad that we got this now because I completely forgot about that. Uh, I'm pretty sure we already mentioned the uh, blue choo choo. If, if we didn't, there's a caption on screen. You guys know the drill by now. Um, stop electrocuting me, you jerk! Yeah, jerk? That's what I thought, fool. Alright, the reward for that treasure chart will be in the description. Will be in the end of the video, as per usual. Again, you guys know the drill by now. Um, we're gonna get the Mephers bottle, and we're gonna be going to take care of something else. Um, something worth mentioning is that in that cave, um, when we were inside that cave, when we were inside the cave for the Crypt Plateau Isles, I already demonstrated how to get inside there in the Wither Tree video. Um, so, uh, the reason I decided to go back in there was because I wanted to get a couple, it was because I did want to go back in there because I said in the Wither Tree video that there was a couple more things in there that we'd be taken care of later, and we're doing that right now. We got the treasure chart, and uh, we also got a Joy Pendant. The, but now we have enough joy pendants to take care of a side quest so that I've been meaning to do for a long time, but just haven't really been getting around to doing it. Um, we'll be taking care of that in the next video. Uh, so I'm going to go after one more Traffer Sard, and then we're going to end the video. Um, just, but I'm just going to see if there's anything on this uh, special wooden platform thingy of platformness. It's probably nothing worth mentioning. If there is something worth mentioning, then I'll keep uh, commentating or whatever. Uh, um, if not, then I'll just skip ahead to the reward. The next place we're going to be going towards is a Bird's Peak Rock, the next location of a Triforsard. Um, you're going to see on screen right now where this is located in the overworld. The reason I wanted to come right here right now is just simply just because it was the closest one towards us. I don't know if the incredible chart uh, tells you um, which ones you've which uh, stars you've already completed, but I'm already keeping track of that in my notes, so I'm not going to be like confused or anything like that. And like I said a couple of videos ago, I think it was the previous video, but how I'm going to be taking care of the Triforce stars, um, the Triforce side quest, is that. Um, Except for videos like this, we're going to be taking care of side quest things and there was a couple of videos and um, we're going to get at least one truffer sword at the end of every episode. With the exception of this one where we're going to be like not doing that, where we go to go to the ghost ship and now we're going here. Alright, so we need to pull out a pair. We need to be very careful with this area uh, because uh, there are some deadly birds of deadliness that want to eat our faces. Um, and I gotta say, this area, it's not... The thing that I struggled with the most on my first playthrough, but we'll see that probably in the probably in the next couple of videos or so. Maybe I don't think it will be in the next episode, but it will be soon. These seagulls were some of the things that I had the the blah, blah. um the seagulls um using these to hit switches was one of the hardest things on my first playthrough of this game because this one I had a really hard time um get, uh, hitting these switches without not getting knocked into a bird. Because I just would, because I don't know why, but I wouldn't push the A button to make the seagull fly faster or anything like that. Um, so I would be way too slow to take care of these. And I also had the mindset that I had to sit these guys down with, an air, with a bow and arrow. And it's really hard to do that. So I ended up wasting like 90 arrows. And I'm not kidding, I had the, um, I had the upgrade, so I'd waste all my arrows of trying to attack these guys. And it was just not a very pleasant experience. In fact, the um, it's not this one, but another similar thing we'll be doing later in the Let's Play. Um, it nearly caused me to um, be so frustrated that I just ended up canceling this Let's Play altogether. Because when I was practice on well, my practice uh, file for this Let's Play, I was getting really irritated about that seagull, and I was like, okay. I'm getting irritated about this, and I know I'm gonna get irritated during the Let's Play, so I probably shouldn't even do this as a Let's Play or anything like that. Then I eventually decided against it, I eventually decided to do this game anyway, because, you know what, it was also the one thing, and there's always gonna be something in a Let's Play that's going to drive you crazy when you're recording, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do Wind Waker anyway, but I'm not gonna like those seagull moments. And then I realized they can push the A button to fly faster, so... Yeah, that wasn't a very pleasant experience.
And we now have a driver's chart. So I'm gonna be guys over on Tingle Lighten so we can get this deciphered. And now we're back on Tingle Island, uh, the place where dreams come true and nobody is seen again. <laughs> Alright, so we have to go through here again. Uh, normally I'm not so negative in my videos, but I just don't like Tingle. Tingle is my nemesis. And the fact that they have uh, spin-off games is what we're- Ooh! Two beaver bottles. The fact that Tingle has a couple of spin-off games, uh, um... That's something that legitimately frustrates me, because I understand Tingle is huge in Japan, people love him over there, I just don't like him. I'm not sure if those games they appeared, ever came out in North America or anything like that, but Tingle does have spin-off games, and they're weird. If I were to make a Zelda spin-off game based off a side character, I would make one about Marin from Link's Awakening, because Marin is such a really cool character, and she's easily one of my favorite uh, characters in a, in a Zelda game, period. Um, so if they were to make a spin-off about another character, it'd probably be, I'd probably want to be about Marin, or maybe... God, what's the guy's name in... Uh, Gris. Uh, Gris from Scout Sword. How did I ever get Gris's name? He's like one of the coolest characters ever. Yeah. If they were to make it, a, yeah. If they were making another Zelda spin-off game, I'd want to be either about Marin or Gris, or Giram, or Midna, or a bunch of other characters who aren't Tingle. Anyway, yeah, Treasure Sword, chart thing. I can see the grade for Sal already. Very small, of course. That was very stupid. Anyway, um, next area we're gonna be going towards is a Stone Watcher Isle, which is the southeast of the Greyfist Isle. Because we got Treffer's chart, and it tells us that there's a Treffer's chart over here. So let's go collect that real quick. I avoid those bad guys because they're not very nice. I think there's another Treffer's chart in this island. I might be wrong about that though. Um, I'll check in a minute after we get our after we obtain our award. Stop, boat, boat, stop, stop. Da, 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 da. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I thought we overshot that for a moment because the boat wouldn't stop moving, but no, we got it. It's nice. Yay! Now you only need five more! This is going by way faster than I thought it would. I thought that was, this would take like five videos or so, but no. This ah! <laughs> I jumped out of a boat into a cannonball! Oh yeah, that was fun. I'm so glad I got that on camera. Oh, okay, um... I'm just looking at my, over my notes. Yes, there is another Traverse piece in this area. But we're going to be saving that for the next episode. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. In the next episode, we're going to be continuing our search for the Traverse charts. Until next time, gear to you. Oh, yeah.